So past papers are vitally important to help you prepare for any exams or assessments that you might have coming up. Now, all the advice in this video is going to be relevant to all subjects across all exam boards, but in particular, I'm going to focus on physics. Ultimately, you're going to be judged on your ability to do questions about physics, and the best way to get good at physics questions is to do as many past exam papers questions as possible. So, where do you begin? Well, a good place is to first of all know exactly which course you're doing. So that might be the exam board, perhaps AQA or OCR, and also the course code that you're actually studying. Um, this is important if you're doing GCSE because you need to know if you're doing higher or foundation. If you're doing separate physics, often called triple science, or if you're doing the double physics, the trilogy, the combined, whatever it might be called, you need to know exactly which course you're doing. And that means when it comes to looking at question papers, you're answering things which are gonna really, really help you prepare. So you know which course you're doing. Now, question papers. Where do you find them? Well, if you want physics ones, uh, I do have them over my website, both GCSC and A-Level Physics Online. If you want to find even more than that, uh, a great place I often go to is Physics and Maths Tutor. And of course, you can go direct to the exam boards themselves. Although sometimes with the exam boards, they don't have older specification past papers available, and sometimes they're a little bit tricky to find. But let's imagine that you've got the past paper in front of you. Now, something that I think is incredibly useful, if you've got the ability to do so, is to actually print out the paper. Now, you don't need to print it out full size. Um, most of the time, to be honest, you can print it two up. But by having it on a piece of paper, it allows you to be there using a pen and paper, a pencil, your calculator, like you would in the real exam. And I do think having them printed out on paper is incredibly useful if you've got the ability to do that. Just two up like this. Um, so what you want to do is um, treat these past papers with a huge amount of care because there aren't many past papers available for the course that you're studying. So I would say, if you're gonna be doing a past paper, make sure that you remove distractions like your mobile phones. Make sure as well that you've got the time to actually dedicate it to it. So you can maybe do the whole past paper in one go if you've got the option to do that. And also, use the equipment that you're going to be using in the real exam. So make sure that you're familiar with the calculator you're going to be using. Again, not just using the calculator on your mobile phone. And then, if there's a question that you get stuck on, don't think, well, I'll just look in my notes, I'll look in my textbook to try and find the right answer. I would urge you to have a go at that question like you would in a real exam. Uh, maybe keep an eye on the time and you can always come back to that question later on. So work through it um, and uh, basically what you can then do is go on to the next stage, which is marking your work. Now, the mark scheme, again, found uh, often on places like Physics and Math Tutor or the Exam Board website, uh, the mark scheme has not been written for students in mind. It hasn't even been written for teachers, it's been written for examiners. Now the people who actually mark the real exams often are teachers doing it in their spare time, they might be ex-teachers or other people who've got an experience in that subject. So the mark scheme can often be quite complicated and difficult to understand. Something I'd urge you to do is maybe just have a quick scan through the information at the start of it, because this will tell you uh, you know, the difference, and this one's an OCR one, but AQA, NXL, they're all fairly similar. It's got the difference between B, M, C and A marks. Um, it's got some extra kind of uh, like guidance for the code that they use in the mark scheme. Um, and then after that, there's, um, you know, just some of the boring stuff, but it's worth reading that once. Now, the mark scheme is going to be really important because this will allow you to check your understanding and obviously to make sure that you give yourself the marks that you think are appropriate. But there's also extra guidance. So um, as you're marking your work, um, I would urge you to um, maybe be a bit harsh on yourself, okay? If you're not sure if you'd have got the mark or not, don't give yourself the mark. So don't give yourself the benefit of the doubt. And ultimately, that means you're going to learn more from the past paper than just going, yeah, well, I think I'm right. I'll give myself the mark. OK, um, the other thing I would urge you to do is as you're marking through maybe in a different colour, write in any extra notes onto the past paper. So this might be um, the things in the mark scheme uh, where they have like words which may be underlined or in bold, the words which are super important for those kind of answers. Also, maybe there might be an alternative way to get the same marks. There might be a different method that you hadn't thought of. And you can always add that into your 
past paper that you're working through. So it's not a case of just doing the question, it's learning from the answers that you've put down and how you could improve them going forward. So you've got the mark scheme, you've marked your whole paper. Um, the ones which I think are quite tricky um, aren't the calculations, they're pretty straightforward, you're either correct or not. The ones which I think are a little bit more tricky to judge how you've got on are maybe the six marker, the longer written answers. Um, and often that's where teachers use their experience and they can look at the answers that they're marking for maybe a mock exam, they compare it to other people's um, and also teachers have a, a huge amount of experience in, in terms of marking students' work. Now if you're not sure if you're correct or not, I would say uh, maybe give yourself less marks than you think you deserve and that means that's going to keep spurring you on to make sure you get the right thing in the future. So don't give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Now once you've got your mark for the paper, um, maybe you get 45 out of 90, it's a good idea to see how that compares to how other people might have got on. And that's where the grade boundaries are useful. Again, you can find all of these by going to Google, typing in the year, the exam board and so on, and you can find the grade boundaries. Now, if you had a test where you got half of everything incorrect, you might still get a grade A at A level for that. Because although the people putting your tests together, they try and have them a similar standard every year, some exam papers are harder than others. And it's really useful to see how you compare to other people who've actually done the exam. Now again, the grade boundaries, big documents. Um, again, this one here just happens to be an OCR one and you can see all of the data there. But I think it's really important for you to see how you'd have got on if you did that exam in real life. Um, also, uh, depending on the, the kind of paper that you've got, um, you might find that actually if you got 40 marks out of 90, that actually might be a good mark. It might just have been a really difficult paper. And sometimes that puts your mind at ease and actually lets you know how well you're doing. So you've done the paper, you've marked it, you've got your grade. But the thing that most students don't do is actually look at the examiner's report. Now again, this is written for other examiners and for teachers. And I think if you want to go for the top grades, if you're wanting to go for the sevens, eights and nines at GCSE, if you're wanting to go for the Bs, As and A stars at A level, the examiner's report is a kind of thing that you should be studying. Now you don't have to read it in depth, but what this is, is a review of the paper. And this is based on thousands of students who did that exam in the past. And what it's really good at, um, this one here is an OCR one again, but again, they're similar for AQA and Edexcel and all the other exam boards, is um, this one actually explains the multiple choice answers. So it's not just A, B, C or D, and that's all the feedback you get. You can see a little bit more about why that correct answer was given and the reason the examiners actually gave that question. You can see actually by looking at these examiners reports that maybe lots of students struggled in the same areas that you did. And there's also hints and tips that often say students would benefit from using bullet points or students would benefit from laying out their work like this. And by reading the examiner's report, in conjunction with the mark scheme that you've already analysed when you've been marking your own work, and also your question paper where you've written in your corrections, that's so much better in terms of your own learning than just doing some questions. If you mark it wrong, you don't look at it again, you're not learning from that. So the examiner's report, I think, is the thing that most students tend not to focus on, and therefore they miss out on lots of guidance about how they can improve in the future. Now, past papers, there are going to be a limited number available for your exam board for the current specification. And there are plenty of options to find extra questions. Now, first of all, I'm going to talk about GCSE and then A-level physics. If you're doing GCSE physics, perhaps you're doing AQA science, you might be doing triple physics. Now, there are also exam papers for those students doing trilogy, the double award, and you might have a look at your exam papers, maybe paper one and paper two in physics, but you can also have a look at the paper one and paper two physics exams for the students doing trilogy AQA, because all of that content is stuff that you know, and it's just an extra source of questions. The other thing you might want to consider is perhaps doing old specification past papers. Now, this is stuff which might be five, 10 years old, but to be honest, 90% of that stuff is going to be relevant for the stuff that you need to know about because physics is just physics. The difference was 
there might be some areas which aren't being assessed anymore and there might be new things which have come into the new board and also the layout and the structure of the papers is going to be slightly different. However, if you know what's in your current specification, you know the topics that you've been taught and could come up in your exam, you can easily use older specification past papers to give you that wealth of questions. The other thing you can think about is doing exam papers from different exam boards. Now, if you're in England and you're doing GCSE physics, then AQA, OCR and Edexcel have very, very similar specifications and you could easily do past papers from another specification. Again, physics is just physics. A question about kinetic energy is going to be the same across all of those exam boards. The other thing you might want to consider are other exam boards which aren't in maybe the same part of the world where you, where you live. So for example, you could have a go at doing questions from WJC, which is the Welsh exam board, SEER, which is from Northern Ireland. You could also look at international GCSEs. I prefer, or I really like Edexcel iGCSE, very straightforward, simple questions. And also you've got things like Cambridge iGCSEs as well. In total, you could be doing questions from maybe eight, nine or 10 different exam boards. And ultimately the more questions you do, the more similar questions you're gonna see, you might see coming up. If you're doing A-level physics, um, don't forget that there are loads of exam boards available. Now in year 12, most exam boards follow a fairly similar course but you do get quite a few variations going into year 13, especially if there are optional topics that you might do with AQA, but not with OCR. And what you really need to know is your specification inside out. So you know the types of topics that you can be assessed on. Once you know the topics you can be assessed on, you can then go back and look at old specification past papers. And these go back a good 10 or 15 years. There are so many questions out there that are just about the good basic physics. The other thing you might want to consider is if you're in England, uh, maybe looking at the Welsh and Northern Irish exam boards, so that's WJEC and SEER. Also, there's an exam board called EDUCAS, which only a few students do in England. They're really good questions, and that's also produced by WJEC. Uh, then obviously you've got OCRA, OCRB, uh, there might be the chance to look at Edexcel International A-Levels or Cambridge International A-Levels as extra sources of questions or even International Baccalaureate. So if you're doing the IB or if you're doing A-Levels, a lot of the content is going to be the same. Ultimately, there are so many past papers out there that you could almost do one past paper a day, every day for an entire year. Now, that would be a bit obsessive, but there are a huge amount of questions out there and it's really down to you how much time you put in. So, I do think that part